friends, welcome back to my channel, myself Chirag. In this video, I am going to discuss about remote user authentication using asymmetric encryption. Topic of network security. Let's check the outline of this video. The first topic is what is user authentication? The second one is what is remote user authentication? The third one is types of remote user authentication? The fourth one is mutual authentication using asymmetric encryption? And the last one is one way authentication using asymmetric encryption. Before discuss about all these topics, let's subscribe my channel. Let's start with the first topic. What is user authentication? User authentication is a process to recognize user's identity. Let's take one non-technical example to understand the user authentication. For example, you are out of town and your friend will come at your home. But your parents cannot recognize your friend. So your parents will not allow enter into your home because your friend is unauthenticated to your parents. So that is called the user authentication. Now take one technical example to understand the user authentication. For example, you are user and you want to access services from the server. But the server is secure. So you must provide ID and password to the server. If ID password are not matched with the server's database, at that time server will not provide any services to particular user. Next, what is remote user authentication? Before discuss about the remote user authentication, what is remote user? For example, you want to access Facebook account, but Facebook server is located in the different country and then user access services from the server. So that user is called as remote user and that server is called as remote server. Now discuss what is remote user authentication. Remote user authentication is a mechanism in which the remote server verifies the legitimacy. Legitimacy means the correctness of the user or a non-secure communication channel. Let's take one example to understand the remote user authentication. For example, there is one user. This user want to access her mailbox, but email server is located in the Singapore. So here user and the mail server both are in different countries. So this user is called as remote user. So first of all, user have to provide its identity to the mail server. So user will enter login ID and password. So user will send the request through the internet to the mail server. So whenever mail server receiving a request from the user, at that time mail server check the ID password with its database. If both are same, then user is authenticated. Then mail server provide the service and user can check their email in the mailbox. So this is called the remote user authentication. Here internet is a non-secure network. Next, there are two types of remote user authentication. The first one is using symmetric encryption and the second one is using asymmetric encryption. Remote user authentication using asymmetric encryption has two methods. The first one is mutual authentication and the second one is one-way authentication. So let's start with the first method, mutual authentication. Here we are discussing about the asymmetric encryption. So now there is one question. How public key encryption is used in the distribution of session key? So let's take one scenario to understand the public key encryption in the distribution of session key. And also check is there any mutual authentication in distribution of session key? For example, there are two users. A is the sender and B is the receiver. User A want to communicate with user B. So user A send a request to user B. This requested message is encrypted using the public key of B. So it means only user B can decrypt that message using the private key of user B. After decryption of that requested message, user B will get two values. The first one is nonce one. It is any random message from user A. And the second one is identity of user A. Then after, user B will reply to the user A and send one message. This reply message is encrypted using the public key of user A. So this message is decrypt using the private key of user A. So it means only user A can decrypt that reply message. After decryption of this message, user A will get nonce 1 and nonce 2. Nonce 1 which was sent by the user A to user B and nonce 2 is sent by the user B to user A. After second step, we can say user B is authenticated because nonce 1 is again sent by the user B to user A. So there is no modification in the nonce 1. After that, in third step, user A sent a message to the user B, which is encrypted using the public key of user B. 
So user B will receive that message and decrypt using the private key of B and user B will get the nonce too without any modification. After third step, we can say user A is also authenticated to user B. So it means both the user are authenticated. So here mutual authentication is complete. In fourth step, user A will send a secret key to user B. So user B will receive that message and decrypt that message using the private key of user B. After decryption of that message, the content of message is still encrypted using the private key of user A. So user B will decrypt that message using the public key of A and get the one time secret key which is sent by the user A. This scenario assumes that each of the two parties are known their public keys of each other. It may not be practical to require this assumption. So we can say it is practically impossible. In this scenario, we can add authentication server or key distribution center and can solve this problem. Now we can solve this problem using two different methods. Let's discuss solution one. There are two users A and B. Here user A want to communicate with user B but cannot communicate with user B due to authentication issue. So here user A will send a request to the authentication server. Here authentication server is not responsible to generate and distribute the secret key for the communication of user A and user B. So authentication server provides the digital certificates to the user A. In that reply message, the first portion is the digital certificate of user A and the second portion is digital certificate of user B. Both the digital certificates are encrypted, which are encrypted using the private key of authentication server. User A will decrypt both the digital certificate and get public key of user A and public key of user B. Public key of user A is already known by the user A. After that, in third step, user A will send a message to user B. In this message, user A will include both the digital certificate and also include one encrypted message. So user B will decrypt both the digital certificate using the public key of authentication server and get the public key of user A and public key of user B. In third message, user A include the session key which is encrypted two times. So first of all, user B will decrypt that message using its own private key because the message is encrypted using the public key of B. After decryption of the first portion, the user B will get another encrypted message. This message is decrypted using the public key of user A which is received from the digital certificate and user B will get the secret key which is shared between the user A and user B. In this solution, authentication server is not generate and distribute the session key but authentication server provides the digital certificate. Here secret key is chosen by user A. So there is no risk of exposure by authentication server. In this solution timestamp is added. The timestamp protects replay of compromised key. So this solution is very compact but require the synchronization of clock. So what I have discussed in solution 1 its short description is written over here. You can read from these slides. Now discuss another solution. In this solution key distribution center is generate and distribute secret key with user A and user B. User A want to communicate with user B but cannot communicate directly due to authentication issue. So user A send a request to the KDC for the digital certificate of user B. Then KDC send a requested digital certificate to user A. So user A will get the digital certificate of user B. Decrypt that digital certificate and get the public key of user B. In next step, user A send a nonce A to the user B which is encrypted using the public key of user B. So user B will decrypt that message and get the nonce A which is sent by user A. After that, user B send a request to KDC for digital certificate of user A and the session key. Then after KDC will replay to the user B and KDC send digital certificate of user A and the session key is tied with the nonce A sent to the user B. So user B can decrypt the digital certificate and get the public key of user A and also decrypt the another portion of the message and get the session key. The user B will send a second portion of the message to the user A which is encrypted using the public key of user A and also include nonce B in this message. So user A will decrypt that message and get the session key and the nonce B. Then user A send nonce B to user B which is encrypted using the session key KS. 
So now in this scenario, we can say KDC is responsible for the authentication and the key distribution. So now both the user are authenticate with each other and get the secret key for the communication. So what I have discussed in solution 2, it is written in next three slides. So from this slide, you can read step number 1, 2 and 3. In next slide, step number 4 and 5 are explained. And in the next slide, step number 6 and 7 are explained. The next method is one-way authentication. Whenever you send a message on non-secure network, there are focus on two main areas. The first one is confidentiality and the second one is authentication. If confidentiality is the primary concern, then the following may be more efficient. For example, user A want to communicate with user B and send a request to user B. In that request, message is encrypted using the session key and the session key is encrypted using the public key of user B. So user B will decrypt that message, get the session key and then after this message is decrypted using the session key and get the message. So we can say that this scheme is more efficient than simply encrypting the entire message with public key of user B. When confidentiality is the primary concern, at that time this method is more efficient. If authentication is primary concern, then use digital signature. When A want to communication with B and send a request message to B. In this method, the message is appended with the digital signature. And digital signature is encrypted using the private key of user A. So user B will decrypt that digital signature with the help of public key of user A. And authentication is proved. But this technique is open to another kind of fraud. So it is vulnerable. Let's take one example to understand why this technique is vulnerable in one-way authentication. For example, there is one employee, Bob, which is doing job in one company. Bob has an idea how to save more money of the company. So Bob want to share this idea with his boss, Alice. So Bob will prepare one mail and add digital signature. So one of the employee of this company is Max. Max is heard about Bob's idea. So Max will capture that Bob's email and remove the digital signature of Bob and add its own signature and then send this mail to Alice. So Max will take all the credit of Bob. So it is one kind of fraud. To counter such kind of scheme, both message and digital signature can be encrypted with the receiver's public key. Now see in this message, this highlighted box shows the message which is vulnerable as per the previous scheme. So this message is encrypted using the receiver's public key to remove the risk of fraud. So if you want to add more authentication in this message, you have to add digital certificate of the sender. Now see in this message, this one is the digital certificate of sender and this one is the digital signature. If you want to add confidentiality in this message, this message is encrypted using the receiver's public key. So this is called one-way authentication using asymmetric encryption. So if you like this video, please hit the like button and share with others. Subscribe my channel. Follow me on social media. All the links are given in description. And all the video materials are available in my blog chiragbalodia.com. Thank you for watching this video.